हेलो हेलो स्टार्टिंग so we the college was established in the year 1992 under the society of cssr and srr education society in the rural background area kamalapuram district kadapa in andhra pradesh india where our chairman sir cv rajgopal reddy garu the chairman come principal of our institution is a department of our mathematics we college is affiliated to yogya mana university andhra pradesh The institution has a beautiful campus, which is full of greenery and spread of four acres. And we have successfully completed two cycles of NAC: the first cycle NAC A and second cycle NAC A in 2023 recently. And we are happy to announce to you that recently we have applied for autonomous status. So that means in a, within a month we are going to obtain the autonomous status. And also coming to an FDP. the main goal of an fdp is to train the research scientist students academicians scholars in creating and evaluating mathematical models and to represent issues that arise during the problem optimization by eminent speakers who have the main fundamental contribution in the field of mathematics especially fluid dynamics we will talk about the fundamental theories approaches and computing methods the dynamical systems numerical programming of heat and mass transfer so now our beloved chairman sri c v rajgopal reddy gar will introduce uh, about the session and we hand over this session to c v rajgopal reddy gar sir thank you sir please take the session sir thank you sir please take the session very good afternoon to the honorable research persons dignitaries delegates and all the participants i extend a very warm i extend a warm welcome to the international fdp on research advances in mathematical modeling and optimization organized by the department of mathematics i am honored to be one of the faculty of mathematics it gives me immense pleasure to address you all 
on this wonderful occasion. We all know how the education sector has been witness, witnessing drastic changes with the implementation of new education policy 2020. As it has become the need of the honor to encourage research and development in the higher education institutions, our institution has been serving the needs by organizing several programs. As another part of it, we are organizing this international FDP. I hope this will become a feather in your cap and I am pretty sure that you will definitely get benefited from this. I once again welcome all of you to the FDP and I appreciate the all the faculty department of mathematics for organizing this wonderful program and thank you so much for this opportunity with this i now hand over the session to convener of the program dr g vinod kumar thank you thank you very much sir for your value so I want to introduce about today's resource in Department of Mathematics, NIT Jalanda. So before that, I want to tell something about our resource person, today's resource person, Sivra Sir. Dr. A. Sivra Sir is, has more than 10 years of teaching and research experience together. Presently, he is an associate professor in Department of Mathematics, Dr. B. R. NIT Jalanda, of India. He has also completed his post in UAE. He worked as Wundong University of Technology in China under the faculty exchange program. Coming to the awards and grants received by him is, he has uh, received the prestigious uh, grants that is Royal Society Commonwealth Science Conference Fellow on grant from Royal Society London. And the next is a travel grant also he has obtained from Council for Scientific Inter Indian Research, that is CSR India, to participate in a conference at a Turkey. Coming to end, research of C that's Dr. Shivra sir. He has published since 16 months, which includes both the Q1 and Q2 generals in SA and IE, with including Scopus for four PhD scholars. And he has best in the Vailud Institute of Technology Vail, consecutively for nine years successfully. Sir, very much thank you for this, sir. And he has a good H index in Scopus, that is 22, with more than 1,300 citations. When coming to an invited talks, he has given many number of numerous invited lectures. See, few of the list, like, he has given in many university institutions in the world to deliver these National Institute of Singapore and National Defense University of Malaysia, University of Putra, Malaysia, the University of West Indies, University of Botswana, Canada, University of Dubai, etc. Like this, many things. Because, uh, besides that, he has positioned many key roles in his career. Coming to his position, he is a president and joint secretary for Academia for Advanced Research in Mathematics Society. He has served as a guest editor for many journals and book series like the European Physical General Topics, Trends in Mathematics, Lecture Notes in Mechanical Engineering, AP Proceedings, International Journal of Engineering and Technology. He has published a book at Champagne and Hall CRC New York. Also, not only as a resource person, he has also organized many national international seminar conferences like few like mm, promote research in India and also United Arab Emirates. He has evaluated several PhD theses and still now is doing a good contribution to the universities present where he is working. Sir, this is complete. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shivra, sir, for accepting for this first. Now,
So, Dr. Vinod Kumar? Sir, sir. Thank you. Uh, shall we start? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, you can start, sir. Thank you, sir, for your, your, your time, sir. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. You please carry on your session, sir. Okay. If anything, sir, we will be, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> so, good afternoon to all the uh, eminent. Uh, uh, administrative professionals, those who are here uh, from CSSR and uh, SRRM uh, Degree College. I, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Vinod Kumar uh, and other departmental faculties of mathematics department and head of mathematics department for giving me an opportunity to share some of my views on the topic. Um, Heat transfer optimization using nanofluids in cavities. So, Dr. Dino? Sir, sir, wait, sir. Uh, I will inform all the points of these big points. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Or uh, you can also centrally uh, mute everyone uh, and yes. then unmute me. Yes, yes sir. Then mute, sir. All the participants are requested to mute your volume so that the session will be going. Thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. I have informed uh -huh. them. Okay. okay. So, dear participants, uh, you may mute your microphone uh, so that it will be very good. Okay. Uh, so, Dr. Vinod Kumar, the slide is visible and my voice is audible, yes, right? Visible, sir. Both are uh, visible, sir. Oh. Audible, your audio is audible and uh, slide also is visible, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. You can yeah. carry on, sir. Yes. So, heat transfer is one of the fundamental area, research area, in which a lot of researchers in the past many, so many decades, they put their efforts to make more understanding and how we can effectively optimize the heat transfer so that most of the situations which we handle with uh, uh, the practical cases, uh, maybe something like uh, heat generators or say the engines, are some very big streams in which how optimally we can utilize the energy. Because in recent days, without energy, it is not possible to do any kind of work. So the energy optimization is one of the very important criteria for the day-to-day -day life. This heat transfer and the heat understanding on heat transfer is one of the primary objective to have some better view on this heat transfer futures. So heat will transfer in different forms, say, for example, thermal conduction, thermal convection, and radiation, and the transfer of energy by phase change. So use generation, use conversion and exchange of thermal energy between the system is very, very important. And understanding the mechanisms also very important. Say, for example, uh, the heat conduction, if we assume there is a stove, in that we keep a vessel, let us pour some water or some liquid, let us switch on the stove, then the heat will increase. Initially, the heat will be very high at the bottom. Then the adjacent molecules of the metal, they say the vessel, that will not move through vibration. It will transfer the heat 
to its adjacent molecule, which is having lower temperature than this particle. In that way, the heat will be transferred from the hot place towards the cold. Uh, by chance, if you see this in liquids, in metals, the molecules will not move through vibration, heat will be transferred. In liquids, the heat will be transferred through fluid movement because the density of the molecules at the top, when the liquid is cool, it will be high. The same liquid at the bottom, due to high temperature, the density will be in decreased. Then the molecules with the low density will go up and the molecule with high density will come down due to the buoyancy effect. The gravitation force also one of the important reasons here for this. Then through this fluid movement, if the heat is transferred, that we say convective heat transfer. The convective tra heat transfer majorly classified into two parts. One is free convection, another one is forced convection. Free convection takes place only due to the temperature difference in the liquid. In addition to that, if the convection in liquids happen due to some force like fan, pump, magnetic generator, or any other external forces, then we call it as forced convection. The combination of both free and forced convection is known as mixed convection. Then the radiation. If we approach our hands close to the stove, we can find there is some warmness when we approach our hands very close to the stove. Because the heat stores, heat source stove will emit some radioactives, radiations that length, that magnitude, that capacity of radiation varies, depends on the source. Due to that, we feel some warmness, though there is no direct contact, like from the sun, how we are getting the energy. That is radiation. The ability of any material to transfer the heat is known as thermal conductivity. This ability is very important to transfer the heat. In this, if we see, the ability of the thermal conductivity is very important. But most of the liquids that are considered as better working fluids to, let us say, cool down the radiator or keep some particular working system at a particular temperature, only these kind of liquids are being used. But the thermal conductivity of the liquids are very less compared to ceramics or metals. The thermal conductivity of the metals are very high, but those metals can't be used as a working material for uh, maybe inside the radiator or inside any kind of working systems. So in the working systems, working fluid only used, but the fluids has less thermal conductivity, solids has more thermal conductivity. Now, if we see how we can enhance the properties of the working fluid that has less thermal conductivity and the solids which has more thermal conductivity, then suspending the solids in nano size into the base fluids and enhancing its property to certain level. There are various types of nanoparticles with various advantage and limitations. 
கார்பன் வேஸ்ட் செராமிக் பேஸ்ட் மெட்டல் செமி கண்டக்டர் பாலிமர் ஈவன் லிக்விட் பேஸ்ட் நேனோ பார்ட்டிகல்ஸ் ஆர் தேர் தே ஆர் பீங் சிந்தசைஸ்ட் இன் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஷேப்ஸ் லைக் ஸ்பியர் பிளேட் பிரிக்ஸ் அண்ட் மெனி அதர் ஷேப்ஸ் அண்ட் தட் இஸ் பீங் சஸ்பெண்டட் இன் டு தி பேஸ் ஃப்ளூயிட் தென் தட் பேஸ் ஃப்ளூயிட் வித் நேனோ பார்ட்டிகல்ஸ் இஸ் நோன் எஸ் நேனோ ஃப்ளூயிட் இஃப் வி யூஸ் ஒன் பார்ட்டிகல் ஆன் ஒன் ஓஃப் யூ சஸ்பெண்ட் ஒன் சாலிட் நேனோ பார்ட்டிகல்ஸ் இன் நேனோ சைஸ் இன் ஒன் பேஸ் ஃப்ளூயிட் தட் வி சே சிம்பிள் ஆர் யூனிட்டரி நேனோ ஃப்ளூயிட் இஃப் வி ஆட் டூ பேஸ் ஃப்ளூயிட்ஸ் ஆர் டூ நேனோ பார்ட்டிகல்ஸ் வித் திஸ் மிக்ஸ் அப் இஃப் வி பிரிங் a nano fluid that we say hybrid so more than one either base fluid or nano particle is known as hybrid nano fluid by chance if we use three nano particles in a single base fluid then that is ternary nano fluid hybrid nano fluid and many other varieties these nano fluids are very important in various heat transfer applications including engine cooling vehicle thermal management domestic refrigerator heat exchangers and many other we would have noticed in some movies that in ancient days when these cars are being drive within some particular temper- particular distance the temperature of the radiator will be very high and they will be having water in some canes and they pour the water into the radiator to cool down the radiator and then again they drive for some other distance means the working liquid is being keep on changed because that water may get evaporated once it is being used for certain time but nowadays there are coolants that is being used in the engine oil engine that we can run the car or whatever the vehicles for a long distance still that will be working as good as depends on the specifications we may also drive the car right now at a stretch 300 400 or maybe more than that kilometers so this is how the technology being improved by enhancing the limitations of the working fluid so the researchers are keep on working to identify effective fluids that will work in some situations where the energy transfer will be optimally hey, sir, sir, sir. Sir. Huh? Sir. so in this kind of uh, research to understand the advantages and limitations of the nano fluid and the need of the practical let us say the heat flux it is known from this equation of decay simple equation first order the rate of change of temperature of the body is inversely proportional to the heat flux in here we don't consider the variation temporal variation only the spatial variation is considered and the proportionality constant is removed with the help of the thermal conductivity now if we assume this in a very simple case let us assume a thin rod in that the second end let us say at x2 the end at x2 has high temperature then the end at x1 has low temperature then the heat will transfer from hot place to cold place let us assume something like there is some heat source like stove is present here that produce the energy that is being transferred from the high heat place to low heat place if we assume the variation of the space temperature variation with respect to the spatial variable and the temporal variable then the equation given by fourier can be used in this if we assume 
the diameter of the rod is very thin, very small, then compared to the variations in temperature in x direction, the other directions like y direction and the z direction that can be neglected. Now, if we assume, then we can go with one dimensional. Now, if we assume the thermal conductivity of the material having considerable variation with respect to the spatial variable, then that can be treated as a variable thermal conductivity. If we assume the variation is negligible, then we can go with this assumption, thermal conductivity as constant. Instead of thin rod, if we assume something like a thin plate, which has sufficient direct uh, length in X and breadth in Y, then we should go with two dimensions. If we assume something like cube or cuboid, which can have variations in all the three dimensions, then we will go with the another variable Z. So in here, this will become dou square t by dou x squared plus dou square t by dou y squared plus dou square t by dou z squared. If we assume all the variations in terms of the difference in spatial variable, then we can go with the Cartesian coordinate system. This will be good for something like the, the uh, square, rectangular, or some proper geometries like heat tensor over plate. This is sufficient. If we assume something like a cylinder, then we can go with cylindrical coordinate system. If we assume something like sphere, then we can go with spherical coordinate system. So it all depends on the need and the practical situation. How many dimensions we need to choose? What are the variables we need to choose? And what are the uh, other effects we need to consider? In this, we don't have the impact of convection. We don't have the impact of any other things, say viscous dissipation, joule heating, thermal radiation, heat source sourcing, many effects we don't have. We just have the variation with respect to space and variation with respect to time. So it all depends on what are the effects we are considering in our problem. Now, the cavity. The cavity is one of the very important geometries that being used widely in various research and development related things. Say for example, energy storage, geothermal reservoirs related studies, boilers or solar collector related studies, underground water flow, nuclear related, nuclear reactor related studies and many other studies they utilize various shapes of cavities. Mathematically, we say orthogonal or non-orthogonal cavities. So cavities which has something like uh, the square or rectangle that are orthogonal cavities. All other types, triangle, trapezoidal, hexagonal, or any other types, C, D, F, O, that are all non-orthogonal shaped cavities. When we make the grids, we will go with non-orthogonal form. In this uh, presentation, we are going to discuss two types of research problems. One are theoretical problems. In other set, experimental problems. I have chosen the problems with an interest to showcase some of the interesting observations in heat transfer optimization in different aspects, like different geometries, different uh, obstacles, different effects, different nanofluids, different methods, theoretically as well as experimentally. So I have taken the research literature from available literature published by various authors. We have also done dozens of problems in cavities. So we have done on square 
are rectangular type cavities. And in this, we want, I want to showcase all different possibilities. So a collection of different research papers is being taken and being presented. In this so in the first study, numerical simulations of magnetohydrodynamic mixed convection of hybrid nanofluid flow in a horizontal channel with cavity in that the impact on heat transfer and hydrodynamic forces are being studied. So these are the governing equations. First equation is the continuity equation. Second and third are the momentum equations in X and Y directions. Fourth is the energy transfer equations. These are the inlet boundary conditions for the velocity and temperature. These are the outlet boundary conditions for the velocity and temperature. In this, this is the unsteady term. This is the convective term. This is the pressure. And this one is the viscous term. And this is a magnetic field applied in an inclined direction with an angle gamma. Similarly, in this, these are the same terms. And this is the buoyancy force. And this is the convective heat transfer. This is the diffusion. So in this study, the geometry is considered like there is a cavity with channel. This is the inlet. The fluid will in and this is the outlet. The fluid will go. The boundary conditions of the cavity and channel are considered like this. The geometry outer has zero velocity, so no slip velocity. And the temperature is considered as a insulated temperature. And the temperature of the obstacle that is placed at a point x0, y0 with the radius r in a cylindrical shape. This actually looks like circle. But when we see in three dimension, this other z dimension, when we see it looks like a cylindrical shape. This obstacle is either considered as a hot or insulated. These are the velocities of this obstacle in u direction and v direction. The applied magnetic field with strength b and angle gamma. The Galerkin based finite element method is used to analyze the futures of the heat transfer and fluid flow. There are various results. One of the results is when the radius of the obstacle is being increased from 0 0.15 to 0 0.35, the average heat transfer rate is being enhanced from 2 to 4, 4.5. That means there is an enhancement in the heat transfer rate up to 119 persons can be achieved only by changing the radius of the obstacle from 0 0.15 to 0 0.35. Not only changing the size, changing the position also has some considerable impact on heat transfer rate. If the position is changed from the place x equal to 1.8 to 2.1, about 2.5 percentage heat transfer enhancement can be obtained. So in addition to the external forces, the fluid and other things, the obstacles also can play a role on 
increasing or controlling the heat transfer rate. This is the next study. So in this study, these are the governing equations. And the geometry is considered like a sinusoidal outer and a kind of circle which is being taken in form of cylinder in 3D. That is an obstacle. Nanofluid is filled. Porous medium is considered. Inclined magnetic field is applied. Outer layer of the obstacle is hot. Outer layer of the cavity sinusoidal shape cavity is cold. Then the heat will transfer from the hot place towards the cold. In here, KKL and the darcy Bosescu approximations are considered. These are the results among various other results. In here, epsilon is the porosity of the porous medium that is fixed at 0 0.3. Then NHS is the solid matrix nanofluid interface heat transfer parameter that is being increased from value 10 to value 1000. When it is being increased, there are three types of equations has been considered for the analysis. One is for the fluid flow. This one is for the heat transfer of the nanofluid. And this is for the heat transfer of the nanoparticles. In terms of the fluid flow is considered, when we increase the porosity from 10, when we increase this solid matrix nanofluid interface heat transfer parameter from 10 to 1000, the fluid flow is being decreased. Because we can see this red color is for highest fluid flow. So this range is getting shrink in this. And similarly, we can observe the red color means high temperature about 0.9 or above. And blue color is the least one, 0 0.1 in magnitude. So we can see when this value is increased, the heat initially up to this is being reduced up to this. So heat transfer of the nanofluid is getting decreased. But the heat transfer of the nanoparticles, it is up to this being increased here. And we can also see a lot of dense variations. So this parameter enhancements, it is decreasing the fluid flow, decreasing the nanofluid heat transfer, but increasing the nanofluid heat transfer in solids. These are the governing equations of the next study. So in this, there is a gas bubble is being considered at the bottom of the wall. The bottom wall is considered as a hot wall and the top wall is considered as a cold wall. In addition to other things, the entropy generation analysis was also performed here. The entropy generation analysis is very important to understand how much energy is being wasted. If we reduce the waste energy, then we can utilize it for some useful energy. That is why we study the uh, energy in terms of uh, this. Now, when we consider the nanoparticles, how that is going to effectively remove the heat near to the hot surface and transfer it away and making the hot place as cool as possible from the next results. So we can see this is the impact of the hot wall and the top is the cold wall. When the nanoparticles are absent, we can see this heat is going up to 0 0.04. When we introduce the nanoparticles for 1%, 2, 3, 4, up to 5%, the results are given here. So we can see the heat impact to other places is being slowly reduced. We can see here more clearly. It has come down close to four to less. In here, below three. In here, further, it is about 0 0.03. It is again at 0 0.03. It is further down. 
So we can observe that in increasing the nanoparticles volume fraction, effectively transfer the heat near the heart wall towards the cold wall. And it is being reducing the heatness impact into the system. So the nanofluids can be utilized as a better, better coolants. When we add the impact of, when we add the nanopart, increase the nanoparticles volume fraction, then we can reduce the impact of the heart wall into the system. But it is not the case if we further, like 10 percentage, 20 percentage, 30 percentage or more, if we increase, still it can effectively reduce the impact of the heart wall into the system. Actually, there are like some limitations. For most of the cases, 5 percentage, up to 5 percentage inclusion of nanoparticles makes the nanofluid as a better working fluid. More than that, instead of decreasing, it will increase. Because we have seen that the solids cannot be used as a better coolant. Only nan only fluids, liquids can be used. So most of the cases, 5 percentage is the margin. Some phase 8 up to 10 also, it may go, depends on the situation. This is the next study. So we have seen in the previous studies that there is some obstacle that can control the heat transfer. We have seen there are nanoparticles that can up, uh, control the heat transfer. Now, if there is a fin, the oscillation of the fin can also control the heat transfer rate. Say, for example, in this, these are the governing equations. Left wall is a hot wall. Right wall is a cold wall. Top and bottom walls are considered as an insulated walls. The oscillation of this oscillator fin is being recorded using this equation. Like the oscillations are considered as a sinusoidal oscillations. When the force we say K is the impact of the ratio of thermal conductivity of these flexible fins to the nanofluid, then the K value is increased, we can see the impact. So the average Nusselt number at 10 to the power minus 8 place, it is being there around maybe 350 or 360 for k equal to 1000. When this k equal to 1, it is around 200. So we can see that the impact of the fins, oscillating fins, can also control the average heat transfer rate. This is the next study. These are the governing equations. So in this study, the multi-wall carbon nanotubes is considered, multi-wall carbon nanotubes and ferric oxide nanoparticles are considered. So it is a hybrid. And water is considered as a base fluid. These two nanoparticles are mixed. And that is being analyzed within a circular two obstacles that has different magnetic source and that both two are placed inside a cavity. So in this, the obstacle's outer side is hot. Then the outer wall of the cavity is cold. Then the obstacle at R1 at this position have gamma 1 magnetic strain. And this one has R2, that is gamma 2 magnetic strain. There is an electric wire that is being connected to this to control or produce the impact of the magnetic source. Now, in this study, we can understand how an external effect like magnetic field can control the heat transfer. This gamma R, that is the parameter of the magnetic strength ratio. This HA is the Hartman number the pertinent parameter to expose the futures of the magnetic field. We have considered this effect with three phase, one is low or absent, moderate and high. And the magnetic strength ratio is considered something like 0 0.2, 0 0.5 or something, and 2, these values are getting uh, 
covered with this. But I think like 0 0.2 and then 0 0.5 or 1 and 2, something like that, I expect. So this is in here, the magnetic strength ratio is being increased. In the absence of magnetic field, the enhancement in the strength ratio of the magnetic field will not cause any impact on the heat transfer inside the cavity. When 25 magnitude of Hartman number is considered, the lower value, we can see heat transfer is high at this region. When we enhance at this region, heat transfer is getting slightly reduced, but we can see more dense heat transfer at this region compared to this. When we further enhance this place, it is being reduced, but at this place, we can see a considerable enhancement in heat transfer. This hot red color specifies hot. When we go for a hard, higher magnetic imposes, magnetic field imposition. Then here we can see compared to this energy transfer is high in this and further in this. Then the strength ratio compared to this, this is more wide, further wide. So compared to this and this, if you see when magnetic field is absent, the impact of the magnetic strength ratio is not identified. When it is present at a high, it is very highly identified. And the magnetic field, when it is absent, heat transfer is less. In presence, it is very high comparatively. This is because when the nanofluid is flowing, when the magnetic force is applied in the transverse direction to the fluid flow, then the particles will be stopped in free motion, the Lorentz force will be impact the fluid flow. That Lorentz force is a destructive type force that will reduce the fluid flow. Due to that reduction in the fluid flow, the transfer of heat will be enhanced by, expand, by opening the subkinetic energy of the fluid. So that is why when the magnetic field is applied, the fluids in the fluids, heat transfer will be enhanced. So in this study, we can understand the heat transfer is enhanced for enhancing the impact of the magnetic field. And now we are at the second phase. So in the second phase, we are going to study the experimental setups. So for example, if you consider this experiment, what are the things we have considered and studied in the theoretical aspects? Those things are relatively same. Only thing is there, whatever we are considering through equations and we will measure the impact through pertinent parameters. Here we directly use through some physical components and we take the readings using appropriate components. But hypothetically, whatever the characters and futures of nanofluid or obstacle or some cavity shape or some effects, they all either theoretically or practically, relatively they will be same. When we go for practical studies, we need to set up the experiment, manpower, cost, time, and there will be various other constraints will be there. And it is not possible for us to immediately set up the experiments in its single value. We will go for a lot of trials. After several trials, we can identify, okay, this will be the optimum value. But for that, there will be a lot of time taking, time will be taken and manpower needed, cost and uh, environmental issues will be there. This all can be reduced by doing the theoretical studies. Say, for example, there is a rocket launch. Then we use the numerical computations and simulations to understand all the properties of the rocket or space vehicle, let us say. Then we make all the possible optimum values 
then we go for the experimental setup that can reduce effectively the number of trails and it is not possible to make it everything practical with different trails to understand the optimizations but theoretically when we do each and each by small small values we can make all kind of variations at the end we can go for the physical setup in the first time itself it can give effective values so in this we can see this uh, there are various components that are being placed in here with picture in here with the schematic view like high voltage power supply that is number 1 that is here number 2 it is heating power supply number 3 that is inlet of the working fluid then number 4 mica insulating layer so like that each and every components are being given here in this we are analyzing the futures of natural convective heat transfer of nano fluid consisted of transformer oil and al2o3 nano particles so in this third in this practical case we are considering these particles means we directly need to suspend the particles the transformer oil means the transformer oil we need to take free convection means we will study the things in a closed cavity in theory if you see suppose there is a nano particle say in this suppose there is a uh, convection say here if there is a convection that convection we can say over here through this equation if any time dependency is there that we can say over here what are the pressure supplied that we can say over here what are the dissipations viscous dissipation viscosity effects that we can say viscosity effects here the impact of the magnetic field through this equation the impact of the nano particles through the uh, what are the values are there say for example for the effective viscosity effective thermal conductivity then the density viscosity electrical conductivity uh, volumetric heat source whatever is there the tall will each particular fluid and particles will have the thermophysical properties so when we consider those particular properties the characters of that material will come and what angle we consider and how much strength we consider what electrical conductivity we consider what strength of the magnetic field we consider what density we consider what is the pressure applied what is the type of convection everything is being done through this equations when we non dimensionalize this equation we will get the pertinent parameters say for example impact of magnetic field through hartman number impact of uh, uh, convection through richardson number impact of the uh, what are the parameters we say for either viscous dissipation or joule heating or uh, uh, say porous medium uh, non drc whatever it is through the particular pertinent parameter we will see in here in the theoretical case we go for it in terms of pertinent parameters in the practical case we go for real measurements so from this study we identify many results and these are some of the results so in this we understand that the heat conduction mode and the natural convection mode both are studied in that the impact of nano particles at 0.1 weight percentage up to 1.5 when it is being increased what kind of nature is being done in the transformer oil with the inclusion of al2o3 nano particles so we can see here in this natural convection mode the heat transfer is something like this with the inclusion of nano particles heat conduction mode in the natural convection mode we can see from the 0.1 to 0.5 it is a very huge thereafter it is like very less but in here it is also from 0.1 to 0.5 it is very high after that it is slightly less but in this natural convection mode we can find only here maximum after that it is very small but in heat conduction mode this is how the 
variations is being observed at different temperatures with the different inclusion of nanoparticles. Relatively, the same things we can also identify theoretically. This is another experimental study. So in this, let us say there is a cold wall. That cold wall is maintained through a water bath cold side. Hot wall, that hot wall is maintained through water bath hot side. Suppose in here, 80 is to 20 ratio ferric oxide and uh, multi-wall carbon nanotubes nanoparticles are suspended into deionized water and the magnetic field impacts are considered with 4.89 to 21.95. Same thing in here, we can see the multi-wall carbon nanotubes and ferric oxide are theoretically considered by suspending them into the base fluid water. And uh, the governing equations are taken care on imposing the natures. In here, instead of this, and the magnetic field is considered through this, and that is being considered based on the pertinent parameter HA. There, practically it is being taken. And the heart wall means in general, we are considering uh, like, okay, this is the heart wall. So TH, this is the cold wall, TC. Like that, we consider it with the value. There, practically, hot wall means there is a hot bath. Cold wall means there is a cold bath that is being considered practically. So, whatever practically there is a there are studies or theoretically, the idea or the uh, characteristics what we get that is relatively same. So, in here, deionized water means that according to the pH value and the thermophysical properties, we can consider the deionized water. 80 is to 20 ratio we want, we can fix the nanoparticles volume fraction according to 80 is to 20 ratio. The magnetic field impact, something like 4.89 is one particular level for pertinent parameter H0, 21.95 is for something else. It may not be exact, but it will be very close to the futures or the characteristics what are being observed will be same. So we can identify all, like what is the impact of magnetic field, whether that should be needed or not needed, what should be the shape of the cavity, what should be the cold walls, whether it should be there should be some slits, is there any insulated walls needed, whether one side cold wall or two side or one side hot That's wall or two side. side. All the needs can be identified by doing the theoretical studies. And then when we go for practical setup, we can do the things with the less number of trials. Nah, I'm just. So we can see the futures here with the different temperatures, the temperature at 20 to 40. Then the effective viscosity at different levels. Then it is very known that when temperature increases, the effective viscosity will decrease. When we don't include any nanoparticles, this is the base fluids impact in terms of effective viscosity. Then when we include the nanoparticles with some percentage, we can see it is effectively increased. So when we go for 0 0.4 percentage, then we can see here the highest oh, effective viscosity oh, is being noticed. At some particular, at 35 degrees Celsius, we can see up to 11.33 percentage average heat transfer and 11.21 percentage average heat transfer, this is average rate of heat transfer, average heat transfer, is being achieved by including up to 0 0.05 percentage of volume fraction of nanoparticles at temperature difference of 35 degrees Celsius. Then, in this case, when the magnetic field is applied in 4.89 to 21.95 in a vertical direction, it is being noticed uh, up to, uh, we can say up to 1.72 to 5 percentage variation. When it is being applied in the horizontal, that is like it is less, that we can see 0.86 to 1.46 percentage. So horizontally it is less, vertically it is high. And we can see this average heat transfer that is like 2.69 to 5 percentage. This was recorded when the magnetic excitation was applied vertically on the side walls. So we can identify that 
the impact of magnetic field either theoretically or experimentally that has relatively same nature when high magnetic field is considered the impact of the heat tensor heat tensor is enhanced so same thing either theoretically or practically we can get and now this is the final study again we have a, a hot wall in one side cold wall in one other side then we have the flow meters then the ball value the pressure cock and the thermal hot bath cold bath the copper heat exchanger test cavity and what are the other components associated with this are listed here and this experimental study identify the optimum concentration of the nano fluid during natural convection processing inside a square cavity with hot and cold walls and other two walls are insulated walls literally same kind of assumptions we made in the previous cases as well so in here the titanium dioxide and water is considered as a nano fluid the nano particles are 50 nm sized nano particles are being considered here when we go for analyzing the heat transfer so it is at 0 particle 0 percentage nano particle volume fraction with the temperature difference from 15 to 55 but studies are taken at 20 30 40 and 50 then this is the heat transfer we can see the inclusion of heat and inclusion of nano particles at 0.05 1 and so on many other percentages in that we can see this square that is 0.05 percentage inclusion of nano particles it is effectively a higher at all the cases that means that is the optimum level of titanium dioxides that can be included into the water to obtain the optimum heat transfer same way in here this results in the x axis volume con percentage concentration and y axis heat transfer and different temperature difference are given here we can see all places at 5 percentage this is at 0.05 that give the optimum heat transfer when it is this is for the non inclusion 0 percent volume fraction this is 0.05 after 0.05 it is keep on decreasing even at something like if we say 0.4 that is further less than the uh, pure fluid so it is a case that it is not always keep on if we include the solid particles that will enhance the properties it's all up to certain percentage this percentage vary uh, the situation to situation in this particular case for this physical configuration at 0.05 percentage of volume fraction we are obtaining the better results so the maximum heat transfer enhancement of 8.2 percentage is found with the volume fraction 0.05 so this kind of things are being noticed in terms of theoretical study as well as in practical studies so with this i uh, stop this uh, uh, presentation and uh, it is open for any questions and answer so overall if you see the conclusion what are the kind of theoretical studies we do that theoretical studies are very useful to identify the optimum values of the situations which are all can control the heat transfer fluid flow average heat transfer more effectively this will be very useful to many practical setups to fix the experimental setup with the optimum values so that number of trials manpower cost time everything can be reduced so this is how the inclusion of nano particles consideration of shapes consideration of uh, uh, the hot wall cold walls other physical setups impacts like magnetic field viscous dissipation joule heating porous media then the obstacles obstacle shapes the implementation of magnetic fields on the obstacles the current past what are it is all the things have some important about the optimizing heat transfer in reality situations so if there is any question i will be happy to discuss
So if there is any questions, doubts, uh, I'll be very happy to answer. Sir? Yes. Uh, sir, with your permission, I will ask the participants as a very yes. doubt. In them, sir. Yes, please, please. Any participants can ask your doubt. Okay, sir. I think no one is having doubt, sir. Oh. Okay, sir. Anyway, sir, Dr. Shura, sir, yeah. thank you for uh, coming and giving this valuable speech by my invitation, sir. I am very happy on you by by getting with my invitation, sir. Participants, so, please respond. If you have any doubts, sir, we'll be waiting now. Okay, sir. With yeah. your permission, shall I? Yes. Yeah. Shall so I, I, I would like to express my uh, thanks. Uh, to the organizers, uh, particularly Dr. Vinod Kumar and the Department of Mathematics uh, for giving me an opportunity to share some of my views on sure, this topic. Sure. And uh, all the best to all the participants uh, to have uh, fruitful sessions in the upcoming sessions by different speakers. Thank you all and bye. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Wait. Please, all the participants, there is no feedback link today. The final feedback will be shared at the final session. Please, one thing you have to maintain that. Please, while there, if there is session is going on, please mute all your things because the session will be going. All the participants will get disturbance. Okay, the same the same link for every four day sessions. Okay, thank you for your patience.